when setting up your estate plan, should you have a trust or not? In today's video, I'm going to go through three core points for you to think about to determine if trust planning is right for you. The first point to think about is probate. Now, probate is the legal process for distributing your assets based on what your will says. Now, many people have come to me and talked about trust planning primarily because they were involved in the probate process, typically with a parent or a family member, and it was not an enjoyable process. It's slow, it's expensive, but it is the way your assets flow if you do not have a trust. It will go based on what your will says. And so, if you don't mind probate, a will is fine. If you're looking to avoid the probate process, or largely if you're looking to move certain assets outside of the probate process, then you should consider looking at a trust because it is a way to avoid probating those assets that are in the trust. So let's talk about the other point. Another point is privacy. So if you do not have a trust and it goes through the probate process, the probate process is public. It is public record. And so Anyone can come along, look at the court records, and see what got probated. What assets did you have? Where did it go? And for many, this is not ideal. They want to maintain a certain level of privacy that the probate process does not deliver. If assets are put into a trust, they avoid the probate process, and they transfer to wherever you decide they go, they transfer privately. So this cannot be looked up. This is not public information. And so the first part we've got is probate. How important is it to you to go through or not go through probate? And the second one is privacy. How important is it that the probate process or the distribution of your assets to your beneficiaries, how important is it that that's not public information? And those are pretty simple. Lastly is protection. Now this has a few layers on it. With protection, so what do I mean? For your beneficiaries, right? Because it doesn't really give you any protection. It gives your beneficiaries protection. So what do I mean by that? If you have money in a trust, you have protection from divorce and you have protection from creditors. Now, what do I mean by that? If you were to give money in trust to a child, in trust, that child were to be married and then they were later get divorced. Of course, we don't want that, but we want to hope for the best and plan for the worst. If that child were later get divorced, those assets that are in trust do not get split amongst your child and your child's spouse, right? So it keeps it in line with your child and it keeps it all in your child's name. Now, I've talked to some attorneys, I've talked to some people that say, well, Kyle, but if you receive assets from a parent, a grandparent, and you inherit assets, it's separate property and it's yours anyways, correct? While this could potentially be true, the reality of it is that if you inherit assets, over time, those assets can be purposely or accidentally commingled via co-purchasing a home or putting it in a joint account or any of the things where life is just happening and it's not set aside in some dedicated vehicle, once those assets get commingled, they become joint property. And then if you have a divorce, you could have an issue where your assets are transferring not to your children. Okay, so we have that protection from divorce. What about creditor protection? When you have creditor protection, if the assets are in trust and your child becomes the victim of a lawsuit in some way, the trust can protect those assets from all being taken versus if that money's just in a child's account, those, those assets are subject to creditor claims. And so you've got protection from divorce, you've got protection from creditors. Also, sometimes, this is not always the case, but sometimes you wanna provide some protection from potentially overspending or potentially bad decisions. Uh, and in a trust, you have the ability to set certain rules for distribution that might protect kids. Because remember, you choose the age at which some assets can come out of the trust. So if you have younger children or grandchildren, you can set whatever provisions you apply. Not that you would, but it gives you the flexibility to do that. And so when you look at divorce protection, when you look at creditor protection, and then when you look at the protection to provide distribution rules that are suitable for you because it is your money, sometimes that can be advantageous. Okay, so now let's go back, look at all three together. When it comes to trust planning, some of the three big issues, and this is not comprehensive. This is not an estate planning meeting. This gives you a framework to start thinking and making decisions. But you've got number one, probate. How important is it to, for you to avoid the probate process? Number two, privacy. Is it important that your assets transfer privately or do you not care? And lastly, protection. Whether that's protection from potential overspending, whether that's protection from divorce or protection from creditors, are those important issues that you want to consider? In which case, with all three, 
you may want to have a discussion around having a trust set up in your estate plan. Now, again, while this is not all encompassing, this is all part of a much larger meeting, a much larger strategy, this gives you a good framework to think through what's right for you and your family. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, thanks for investing your time with the personal CFO.